Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. X is a real number. We are interested in the sum over positive integer n of 4 to the n sine x over 2 to the n to the power 4. We write down sine to the power 4 as sine squared x over 2 to the n sine squared x over 2 to the n. This sine squared can be written as 1 minus cosine squared x over 2 to the n. If we multiply this term by the bracket, we get 4 to the n sine x over 2 to the n squared minus 4 to the n, which can be written as 4 times 4 to the n minus 1 sine squared x over 2 to the n cosine squared x over 2 to the n sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta this means that this is the square of sine 2 times x over 2 to the n this term here is 4 to the n minus 1 the square of sine x over 2 to the n minus 1 this term is exactly this one with n replaced by n minus 1 we have a telescopic sum if we do the sum small n from 1 to big n we get 4 to the big n sine squared x over 2 to the big n minus this term with small n set to 1 this is sine x squared to get the sum of interest we take the limit of this term here as big n tends to infinity we multiply and divide by x squared sine x over 2 to the n divided by x over 2 to the n this tends to 1 as big n tends to infinity thus this term tends to x squared as big n tends to infinity the sum of interest is equal to x squared minus sine x squared the second sum is over positive integer n of minus 1 to the n, 2n plus 1, the natural logarithm of 4n times n plus 1, divided by 2n plus 1 squared. Note that the numerator is 4n squared plus 4n, which is 2n plus 1 squared minus 1. The argument of the logarithm is 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1 squared. We define the function omega of x, x between 0 and 1, of the sum n from 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the n, 2n plus 1, len 1 minus x squared over 2n plus 1 squared. Note that if x is equal to 0, we have here len 1, which is 0. Omega of 0 is equal to 0. Let's obtain the first derivative of omega with respect to x. Assuming that we can differentiate the series term by term, the derivative is n from 1 to infinity minus 1 to the n, 2n plus 1. Then we have 1 over 1 minus x squared over 2n plus 1 squared minus 2x over 2n plus 1 squared. We can take minus 2x outside the sum. We have 2n plus 1. In the denominator, we have 2n plus 1 squared minus x squared. This sum is related to the secant function. To show this, we start by this result, that the integral s from 0 to infinity, s to the x minus 1 over 1 plus s, is equal to pi over sine by x, where x is in the open interval from 0 to 1. In the notes, I include a derivation of this result using complex contour integration. Split the integral into two integrals from 0 to 1 and from 1 to infinity. Here, the integral is written using the dummy variable of integration u. Let's do the change of variables u equal to 1 over s, du is equal to minus 1 over s squared ds. When u is 1, s is 1. When u tends to infinity, s tends to 0 from above. We can use this minus sign to have the integral from 0 to 1. And here is du without the minus sign. u to the x minus 1 becomes s to the 1 minus x. 1 plus u is 1 plus s to the minus 1. Multiply by s over s. The integrand becomes s to the minus x over 1 plus s. Now we combine the two integrals to get integral s from 0 to 1 s to the x minus 1 plus s to the minus x over 1 plus s. We make use of the expansion of 1 over 1 plus s. That's summation over non-negative integer g of minus s to the power g. We interchange the order of sum and integral. When we integrate this function of s from 0 to 1, we get 1 over g plus x. When this function is integrated from 0 to 1, we get 1 over g minus x plus 1. Let x be equal to eta plus 1 half. If x is between 0 and 1, then eta, which is x minus 1 half, is between minus 1 half and 1 half. Sine by x becomes sine by eta plus pi over 2, which is cosine by eta. This x and that one are replaced by eta plus 1 half. We can bring these two terms together. In the denominator, we have g plus 1 half squared minus eta squared. In the numerator, we get g plus 1 half plus g plus 1 half. That's 2g plus 1. We multiply and divide by 4. Here is 4 in the numerator. When 4 is multiplied by this term here, we get 2g plus 1 squared minus 4 eta squared. We are interested in this sum. We defined the function omega of x. If we take the limit as x tends to 1 from below, we get the sum of interest. This is the first derivative of omega with respect to x. We derived this result here on the previous page. Replace eta by x over 2 to get by sec by x over 2 equal to summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the g 4 times 2g plus 1 over 2g plus 1 squared minus 
x squared. When g is equal to 0, the sum is equal to 4 over 1 minus x squared. Then we have the sum over positive g. This sum here is equal to 1 fourth of pi over cosine by x over 2 minus 4 over 1 minus x squared. Multiplying by minus 2x, we get 2x over 1 minus x squared. We also get minus by x over 2 over sine by over 2 times 1 minus x. This term here is cosine by x over 2. Using sine 2 theta equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta, this term here can be written as minus pi x over 4. In the denominator, we have sine and cosine. The argument of both is pi over 4 times 1 minus x. If we integrate omega prime of u, u from 0 to x, we get omega of x minus omega of 0, which is 0. Omega of x is the integral of this function. The integral u from 0 to x of 2u over 1 minus u squared du is equal to minus ln 1 minus u squared. We get minus ln 1 minus x squared. We also have minus pi over 4, integral u from 0 to x of u divided by this product. Let's do the substitution. z equal to 10 pi over 4 times 1 minus u. When u is equal to 0, z is 10 pi over 4, which is 1. When u is x, we have 10 by 1 minus x over 4. 10 inverse z is equal to pi over 4, 1 minus u. So u is equal to 1 minus 4 over pi, the inverse tangent of z. du is minus 4 over pi, dz over 1 plus z squared. If z is this tangent, we have a right triangle. This angle is pi over 4 times 1 minus u. This is z, this is 1. The hypotenuse is the square root of 1 plus z squared. This sine is z over the square root of 1 plus z squared. This cosine is 1 over the square root of 1 plus z squared. If we multiply the numerator by minus pi over 4, we get the inverse tangent of z minus pi over 4. Using this 1 plus z squared, we get z downstairs. This 4 over pi is here. The minus sign is used to swap the limits of integration. The integrand is the inverse tangent of z over z minus pi over 4z. 4 over pi times pi over 4, that's 1. The integral of 1 over z is ln z. When we use the limits of integration, we get plus ln 10 pi over 4 times 1 minus x. The integral of this function of z can be written as an integral from 0 to 1 minus an integral from 0 to 10 pi times 1 minus x over 4. The Taylor series expansion of 10 inverse z is sum over non-negative integer v of minus 1 to the v, z to the 2v plus 1 over 2v plus 1. If we divide by this z, we have the sum with z raised to the power 2v. Integrating term by term, we get summation over non-negative integer v of minus 1 to the v over 2v plus 1 squared. This is 1 over 1 squared, minus 1 over 3 squared, plus 1 over 5 squared, and so on. This is Catalan's constant, denoted here by g, and is multiplied by 4 over pi. We still have the integral from 0 to the tangent, this logarithm minus ln 1 minus x squared can be combined to give us this term. This is omega of x. To get the sum of interest, we take the limit as x tends to 1 from below. When x tends to 1 from below, this tends to 0, and the integral tends to 0. If we look at this function, if we put x equal to 1 in the numerator and denominator, we get 0 over 0. To obtain the value of the limit, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. The limit of the ratio is the limit of the ratio of the first derivatives. Downstairs, the first derivative is minus 2x. Upstairs, it's minus pi over 4 times the square of the secant of pi 1 minus x over 4. If x tends to 1, we get minus 2. From above, this is 1, and we have minus pi over 4. The limit is pi over 8. The sum of interest is 4g over pi plus ln pi over 8.